More of the Zach Gelb Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. All right, welcome back in Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. Zach Gelb Show rolling along on this Wednesday, 609-919-9200 is the number to hop on board with us. Let's go out to the hotline right now and welcome in the former NFL quarterback, now working two jobs with SB Nation Radio and ESPN Houston, and that's Sean Salisbury. Sean, appreciate the time, and how are you, my friend? I'm doing well. Good to be on with you, brother. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. You're big time now. Two shows. That's tough. Well, it's, you know, six hours a day, but it beats the alternative. And I uh, I never take it for granted, man, after all the years at ESPN and how blessed I was to be doing TV every day and work your way back, take some time off. But, uh, you know, been been going at it for about three years again now, but this is new with the new Sean Salisbury show from 3 to 7 Central on SB Nation and doing the ESPN local in Houston in 97.5. So I've been blessed, man. I, I don't take the fact that we have a great job that some of these – pays us to do and that we're fortunate to have great fans that listen so i'm blessed to have it it beats uh it beats doing uh, something we hate so i'm fortunate and the pay is probably nice too because when you do one show well, like it, myself that, yeah. that's all right but then you get paid for two shows i know you get a little bit tired but that must be nice uh, uh if i if i complain about being tired to all the people who work so much harder than i mean I, we, we as you know we prepare hard and try to do our best but there's a whole bunch of people in this world that that are working their ass off for a lot less that, that need the outlet of a few laughs and good sports talk. So you will never, ever, ever, ever get me complaining about being tired on this job. Matter of fact, I'm more tired when I'm not working than when I am. So I'm pretty blessed. You're exactly right. All right, let's get to some football, the Hall of Fame. And I saw T.O. at the Super Bowl on Radio Row the Friday before the announcement. And I told him he got screwed last year. And I thought he should have been put in this year. He did not get in this year, as we all know. Do you think T.O. got screwed of this one? Well, I, he belongs in. Um, I don't have a Hall of Fame vote. I, I'm one of those guys that believes all, all former living players should also have a vote over and above the writers and those that do. I do. I mean, if you want to talk about offensive linemen, doesn't Anthony Munoz have a pretty good clue over who, who's good? It's like the Heisman Trophy, former Heisman Trophy's vote. The greatest honor on the planet is a football player other than winning a Super Bowl in any sport and winning a championship. That's one. Two is being crowned with the bust in, the, in in whatever sport you're in the Hall of Fame. We got just what just over 300 of them in the Hall of Fame. It's a special and an elite group and a unique group that it's unfortunate, but it's going to happen. And then and I, I don't we, we do get caught up in the who's the first ballot, who's the second ballot. Why did he? Why did Art Monk have to wait eight years? It happens, man. It happens. It, it, I my only suggestion for him, and you're right. Regardless. And I do understand, I mean, that there are guys who vote. Obviously, it's why I didn't get in that had a problem with him as a teammate. Now, I was never on a team with him. I covered him. I get. I understand their side. It's their vote. But I, I, I'm, I stand on the side, even though I may not have agreed with everything Terrell Owens did in his career, he performed. He was a hell of a player, and I get that. But now let's, get, let, let's now spring forward to this moment of post-career. The, the, the key here is in some guys you're not supposed to – I always find it ironic that – you know, a guy can induce to be to drugs and do all those things off the field, and we're not supposed to take a morals clause into it. They can get in, but a guy who may have had some trouble with teammates in a locker room can't. It's an odd way we approach it, but I respect the voters as well, and it is a very elite class so uh, of, of people that get in. I mean, there's not many. <laughs> it's tough to get in that Hall of Fame, but for me, yes, the numbers bear it out. Of course he's a Hall of Famer, and he will get in. But now my thing is his approach in the past of, like, like even lately, you know, I understand he's complaining about it, and I, and I know he's frustrated, and I get it. But that, that plan hasn't worked. But the same reason guys have not put him in, he's helping validate that by, being, you know, by constantly speaking out about it. We all know he, the, the, the smart football people, and even the people that didn't vote for him know he belongs in numbers-wise. So maybe take a different approach. How about this year, approach it from the, you know what, I'm just going to say I, I disagree with the voters. But it's their vote. I respect it. I understand. And I'm hoping at some point in time they see fit that I deserve to be in the Hall of Fame with the best players of all time. And then just let it go. You don't, you don't need to keep doing it. Look at the difference now. How we view Randy Moss. Moss, you know, wasn't, was a guy who didn't really like the media. He, he, he had some of the similar problems. You know, walked off the field early, all those things. Look what he's done now in his post-career. He's endeared himself on TV. People look at him different. People forget that Randy Moss at times – had some, had some 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 issues with the media too, or in a locker room. People forget that because we see him. He's he's, he's jovial. He laughs on TV. He's got a great opinion. He gets after it. Now I don't know if he's going to get in 
the first time either because of a similar reason that Terrell didn't get in. Both belong in. But another thing is, if it's not this year, it's not next year, maybe the next year. Hell, the anticipation sucks, but he deserves to be in. So maybe this year, address it. Say, okay, I got the frustration out. Everybody should understand why he's frustrated. And then just take the softer side approach. Sometimes you've got to skin the cat a bunch of different ways. There's not only one way. Maybe the stay, you know, stay distant from the Hall of Fame talk. You can stay relevant doing TV and guest appearances. But just address it in a different way and see if that doesn't work. It's amazing how you can get to people. And, you know, it's not always the squeaky wheel that gets the oil. Sometimes it's the one who uses honey. And I know that's such a cliche and cheesy, but maybe that should be his approach before we get to next year because he will get in. And I do believe he got hosed, yes, but I don't have a vote. So we got to go by what it is, and what it is is where it stands. I think a problem with the Hall of Fame is that they only allow a max per year of five modern-era candidates. Uh, For example, I can make a lot of arguments like Morton Anderson. I think he's a Hall of Fame player, but I would put T.O. in before Morton Anderson. I thought they should expand that list because – you're going to get that log jam. You look at the safety position. Uh, you have John Lynch, Brian Dawkins. Soon down the road, Troy Palomalu and Ed Reed will be eligible. I would expand uh, that modern era list to maybe a max of seven uh, instead of five, Sean. Well, I don't have a problem if there's nine guys that are worthy. I don't. I, I don't, I don't get the we, weight game, honestly. Uh, uh, I mean, if nine guys are worthy to be in the Hall of Fame that year or seven, then, then, then why, why do we have to wait? I, I don't understand. All I understand right. can't put 37 in, but I, 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 I got an issue, too. But a lot of times, well, we put one receiver in. We can't put two. Why? It's what if stupid. There's three rece- what if there's three receivers? What if Moss, Owens, and let's say Marvin Harrison all were at the same exact time? If they're all three worthy and they're more worthy than, a, than two corners and a quarterback, put them in. You know, I actually had one voter come on my show the day uh, before or the day after the Hall of Fame vote, maybe it was the day after, um, and the Monday after the Super Bowl or Tuesday, and he said of all the Hall of Fame guys that got in, now this may blow your mind, this is what he said. He said that the most, the most, and this is LT included, he said the most, uh, the candidate that was most, that, 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 that had the, the best uh, numbers and that was, should have been the first guy in of the group that went in, there was a most the, the, the candidate with the most accolades and deserved it was Morton Anderson. Wow. He said that he, that's a, he said that of all the people, he was the most was qualified. That? He said he was the most qualified to get in. So, you know, there, there, a lot of people have different approaches. I think special teams, the two things I think, I think we should have a special teams players do belong. How can you tell me that, that Devin Hester oh, doesn't I agree. belong in the Hall of Fame? Oh, I 110% agree. Who and, said and that, I, by the way? Who said the quote about Anderson? Right, right, and I'll, and I'll get to it in a second. And then I also, who, uh, uh, who says in, in assistant coaches, Dick LeBeau, while he's in as a player, how is it he, Tom Moore or Alex Gibbs, why does a head coach the only one who gets Hall of Fame consideration? Assistant coaches do more work. They do. Assistant coaches do. The assistant coaches do. Now, I know that the head coach has earned his job, but the, the offensive coordinator does more work towards his team on the offense than the head coach does. So all the the Tom Moores and and Dick LeBeau's who have been in football for six years, how would they not have a special wing for assistant coaches in the Hall of Fame? I don't get it. You win Super Bowls, and the only coach that gets credit is the guy who's the head coach. I think that's Bush League. Um, Clark Judge, and I'm a big Clark Judge fan. He he, he thought, and and I'm a huge Clark Judge fan, but he, he thought that Morton Anderson was as qualified as anybody to be at the top of that list of any of them in the Hall of Fame. And so everybody has a reason. Terrell Owens is going to get in. Randy Moss is going to get in. I know it must suck waiting for your opportunity. Sean Salisbury with us right now. In terms of the Eagles, when you look at the product coming on the field next year, they're going to have to improve a lot in this offseason. Cornerback, wide receiver, offensive line. They probably need another pass rusher as well. You have a bunch of guys on the market, and everyone's going to look at Alshon Jeffrey. I don't know if they could afford Alshon Jeffrey, but let's put Alshon Jeffrey aside Pierre Garçon, Deshaun Jackson, Kenny Britt, Kenny Stills. Who would you target if you're Howie Roseman? Well, you can't. I don't think you can pay Kenny Stills number one receiver money. I don't. And I, and I don't I, – I put it this way, and I've always believed this, that if you want a guy bad enough, you can manipulate your salary cap and ask people to move money around to get him. If, if you want Alshon Jeffrey, then you better, you, you better go after – we know what kind of home run hitter Deshaun Jackson is. 
Pierre Garcon's a consistent player at wide receiver. I think Kenny Stills is a great number two or three, but you can't pay Kenny Stills $13 million. Okay, He's the third receiver, second, third receiver on his own team right now. And Jarvis Landry is going to get paid. So I'm a still fan, but if you're just if you're looking for number one, obviously Jeffrey's the guy. It depends on what they want to spend. It is not a deep free agent class, and I heard that Sean Watts wanted to stay in Washington, but you know money talks. So we'll see if they roll down that uh, street again. So that is definitely a position, and and you know the truth is you're going to have to overpay in a lot of positions. If you want a guy bad enough, sometimes you got to roll the dice and overpay. And if that's the case, and overpays of those guys, I, I think Kenny Stills is a consistent football player. We know this. You're looking at four guys that can play. The key for Alshon Jeffrey is, and I think to have him grow with the quarterback, I got to make sure that he shows up every single day, ready to go. Because when it talks about ball skills, that guy can flat out go get it, and they need him for 16 games. They do need a pass rusher. They need corners, but they have got to upgrade. See, they need more than one a wide receiver. Philadelphia, Philadelphia. And, and, and while it may sound disrespectful, it's just fact. Look at him. I'm not telling anybody in Philly anything they don't know. That is that is that is a subpar receiving core. You're being you nice saying in, that. You're being nice what, saying that. Yeah, that it's well, yeah, an exactly. awful receiving it, it, core. But they 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 are some of they, they they are. Put it this way: I've seen college receiving groups as a whole that are probably better. They got to get better. And Wentz has got to. It'll be a big help to Carson Wentz. That is such a. That's a football team that's close. The pressure they put on on defense, they'll get after you. They have got to have some home run hitters that are closers and finishers. And quite frankly, not just speed. I need a guy that on third and six I can continually rely on to move chains for me. So they need more than one. They need at least two. And quite frankly, they could probably, between free agency and the draft, go get three of them and three of them that could actually impact their team. So those four guys you mentioned, they could take two guys that aren't Alshon Jeffrey because he's going to be the one that gets paid the most. But you better empty the bucket on wide receivers to help that young quarterback grow. Jordan Matthews is good, not great. That's the only one that is really worth keeping in Philadelphia right now. Uh, but when we look at all these names and everyone could speculate who's going to come here, let me throw out an interesting one, and I don't think it's going to happen. I don't even know if he is going to be capable of playing football again. But Josh Gordon is a restricted free agent. The Browns probably want nothing more to do with him. Would you maybe try to get him on a one-year deal for cheap and see if you could find a way to get him from his dark places into a good place in Philadelphia? Absolutely. I'm a big believer in saying, you know, first of all, and I, and he has a problem, and I think he's admitted it. I mean, there's no question. I, I can take another step. The, the marijuana rules in this league, we got to change them. Okay, we got to change them. We, we, we do. Marijuana is not the biggest problem in this league. Painkillers and other stuff is. The marijuana isn't. We have got to change the way we look at how guys see it. And I'm not, I'm not a smoker. I'm, I'm not. I don't, I don't do it. But I understand. I got buddies that do post game, post post careers, and the rest of it. I, I, I think actually the rules are abs- quite absurd to be honest with you when it comes to it. But they are the rules now. But with a guy like that who is an enormous talent, now we, well, we're going on three years now not seeing his game on the field, about, you know, right around there. But I, for a low price, minimum salary, loaded with a center's one-year deal, can you keep yourself clean? Hell yes. And I believe in chances. I do. I, I believe in chances that guys who, and I, and I don't make the excuse, well, he's a young kid. Screw that. If he's old enough to go buy a beer or buy a marijuana, he knows what's right and wrong. So he does have a problem. Hopefully they can get him help. Hopefully he's getting himself help and, and re- re- realizing what a privilege it is to play, not a right to play in the league. But I'm all about second chances. Hell, I'm about third chances as long as it doesn't come to hitting women and, and, and sexual assault and those things. When it comes to marijuana, yeah, yeah, I am. And I believe you get him around the right people and he takes care of his business and is serious. If he loves football and loves life, yes. So he, he wouldn't cost you anything. You go get him on the cheap. You may find yourself a hidden superstar that turns his life around and could touch some other people's lives. And he is a home run hitter because when he was right, he was one of the bright young receivers in the league. I'm all about second chances. This self-righteous, holier-than-thou crap that the world wants to throw at us when it comes to a, a joint. So, the, and I don't smoke, like I said, but I, I, I'm tired of that rule. We don't even know. I mean, we punish guys like him more than we would somebody who did something far more heinous, and it's wrong. No, you're exactly right. We saw it in the Jersey area this year. Josh Brown originally only got one game for the disgusting, heinous acts that he committed to his ex-wife, and someone smokes a joint, they take one hit of a joint, that's in their system, and they get four games. You're right. It's absolutely Josh ridiculous. Brown, Josh Brown shouldn't, he shouldn't even be, judging by what we saw and read, what we heard read, he shouldn't be kicking, okay? He shouldn't be allowed to kick in the league right now. I mean, he, he should. I mean, he he did the same thing that the Ray. I mean, we're talking we, we Ray Rice and Harvey Hardy and all the 
things that have gone on. We saw the Joe Mixon video, all these things. Why in the world, and I posted that when it happened months ago, saying we sure as heck better approach him the same way we've done everybody else when it comes to Brown. You're exactly right. So when it comes to, I, I got zero tolerance for the sexual assault and abuse of women or children. But you know what? When it comes to smoking a joint, you know, save it. Stop the, the, the that rule and the way we approach marijuana and cannabis has got to change. If we have any common sense at all, and again, this is coming from a guy who doesn't smoke it. Sean Salisbury with us, wrapping up with the former NFL quarterback. Uh, just give me your evaluation this past year of once, and what are some things that you would like to see him improve on in year number two? I, I, I would. I, I think he's going to be special. I think a year like this, when I watch, I go back and I think about Troy Aikman. I watch Peyton Manning. I was. I John Elway. How times when they struggled early in their career as rookies. Hell, when they kept, there was a, a, a quarterback room divided over Aikman and Steve Walsh when they drafted him in the supplemental draft from Miami in the first round. Uh, I talked to a coach in that office that said it was a, a coaching room divided. Do we start young? I mean, do we start uh, Steve Walsh or Aikman? Steve Walsh. Now, can you imagine the fortunes? And I like Steve, but the fortunes of the Cowboys had something else have gone different. Well, they let him fight through his, what, 0-11 or 1-11 start Aikman and look at the result. I like a quarterback who gets banged around and, and starts fast and then struggles and has to come out of it. I mean, it happened to Elway. It's happened to a lot of great players. For me, you, the makeup, the mechanics, the toughness, the arm strength, the lower half, everything about him, I, I'm a huge fan. And I, I would have taken him 20 picks ahead of Jared Goff. I don't even think they were close. Goff was my fourth quarterback on the board last year. It went, it went. Uh, Dak Prescott, Lynch, and then Goff. And that was my preseason. So I think that the Philadelphia Eagles got themselves a stud in the future. He's obviously got some stuff to learn, but he'll go back and watch this film this offseason when he lines up next year with Doug, and the light switch will go on, and things that he thought were 12 and 14 guys on the field, it'll start to roll into shape, and he'll be confident. And when they get him players, he's even going to be better. I think the Philadelphia Eagles have their best quarterback hell. It's been a while, obviously, since Donovan McNabb. And this kid's potential is every bit as good. He's a big, strong kid with a great head on his shoulders. And I think he can handle the pressure of a, a tough but very, very bright Philadelphia fan base and media. And I think Carson Wentz is perfect for this job. Sean, appreciate the time. It was good to see you in Houston. Thanks so much. I always appreciate you, my brother. Thank you. Thanks so much. There's Sean Salisbury joining us on the Zach Gelb Show. Fox Sports 920, the jersey. What we'll do right now is we'll take a quick break. And I thought he hit the nail right on the head with a lot of stuff. And T.O., he got screwed. Uh, There's no doubt about it to me. And people could say all this innuendo. And I'm not going to say that T.O. was a choir boy because he was the farthest thing from that. But almost 16,000 yards in receiving, 153 touchdowns. I haven't heard a logical argument yet why he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. And this weight game is an inane concept. And then in terms of wide receivers, you look at the market. Alshon Jeffrey, Pierre Garçon, Deshaun Jackson, Kenny Brick, Kenny Stills, Josh Gordon. Heck, I'd take any of those guys on the Eagles because any of those guys can at least do the simple task of catching the football. And then finally with Wentz. I walked away last year with Wentz. And I kept on saying after every game, oh, this is the most impressive thing he does, or this is the most impressive thing he does. His ability, and everyone was fearful of, how will he adapt from the FCS level to the NFL and control the line of scrimmage with the game speed? He did that flawlessly in his first year. And going down the field, the high interceptions, that's an area of concern. But when you don't have a lot of talent around you, for the season he had, yeah, you walk away as an Eagle fan you have to be encouraged. 609-919-9200. This is the Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back to wrap up shop after these short messages. 